screen. Is it a comedy, a drama, an action movie? It's all in none of those things. It's Bronco Billy. No, Bronco Billy doesn't quite know what's going on. The plot doesn't know either, but there are definitely some characters and occasional dramatic flair now and then to hold this thing together. Maybe the movie structure is secretly metagenius. A ragtag group of performers in the failing Wild West show struggle to make ends meet as they bounce from one small town to the next, risking life and limb as they go. They wind up in Idaho as funds get desperately low. Outside of Eagle, they pick up an abandoned newlywed who's as snooty as she is troubled. And then there's some crazy scheme involving her stepmother, some old guy, and a smarmy husband who left her in Idaho. I'm living what has happened. Has happened. Edgar, I'm facing the electric chair. So the group and the narrative come together, it all falls apart, then they chase some wild tangents that don't really go anywhere. Clint does a decent job as the crusty, overbearing ringmaster with a heart of gold. Bronco Billy is a complex character who's past his prime, set in his ways, and refuses to let the dream die. Sandra Locke plays it cool and distant as the snobby heiress Antoinette Lilly. Jeffrey Lewis tries to play a crooked rich guy. Wait, oh, hey, hold up. This is virtually the same cast as Every Which Way But Loose, minus Clyde the Orangutan. Coincidentally, the sequel, Any Which Way You Can, came out later that year. Perhaps Bronco Billy is the unofficial third Which Way movie. Besides the similar casting, many of the themes are consistent. Character-driven stories about lower-income folks trying to get by, small-town America settings, and shit-kicker bars that attract wildly successful recording artists. Every afternoon when I wake up, I see a little prayer and drink. Is it too much of a stretch to imagine Bronco Billy in the same cinematic universe as those cheesily entertaining Clyde movies? Yes, yes it is. Anyway, Bronco Billy succeeds when it's a drama, a tale of survival in the modern West, a eulogy for wholesome family entertainment. It fails as a cohesive narrative and basically any time they attempt comedy. The wacky blackmail subplot just doesn't fit and, if taken out, doesn't really affect the main story. Perhaps the filmmakers thought they needed to add extra suspense and raise the stakes. Or maybe they just needed the extra padding to get the film to feature length. The performances are adequate and the editing is standard issue. It's a movie that's just kind of there. It doesn't have those remember when moments in the which way movies. Like remember when Clyde took a dump in that car? Or when they fought for 45 minutes across the Wyoming landscape? Or when Sandra Locke sang all of her hit tunes, boy, were those memorable moments. The standout performance is clearly the Treasure Valley, with extensive on-location shooting in Eagle, Meridian, Nampa, Boise, and Garden City. This is noticeably an Idaho film. The valley serves as a stand-in for small-town America, with all of its charms and tribulations. You can visit these locations today, although they may look a bit different. It's amazing to see how the region changed in 40 years. So if you're a fan of the late 70s short-lived love affair with the country western culture and just can't get enough of Sandra Locke, you'll love Bronco Billy. And if you're a Treasure Valley knight or local historian, it's definitely a must-see.